All right, welcome back. It is a terrific Tuesday on uh, Liquid Lunch. It's always a beautiful day when we're here live, noon to 2 Eastern, Monday to Friday, from the Corona Bunker Studios. Um, we're in the heart of the rotting Big Apple under the uh, de Blasio and Cuomo leadership. It's getting worse by the minute here. Um, I have been a publicly avowed Trump supporter from day one, um, but in my other life of pursuing truth and justice for all, um, I'm the vice president of the New York State Reform Party, and I've been a longtime advocate for third parties, ballot access, multiple, cho multiple choices for people. Um, and many have called it a little weird that I've been hanging out with uh, this guy, one of 1,200 candidates uh, declared in this presidential election with the Federal Election Com Commission. None other than Brock Pierce joins me right now. Hey, Brock, how are you? I am grateful, and I'm... Uh, I guess calling in from Fairbanks, Alaska. All right. You're hitting, uh, you're hitting every corner of this thing. And uh, Brock, so just to be clear, you've been on the show before. I know you for quite some time. You're on the advisory board of one of the companies that I started. Um, you're a tremendous innovator. You're ahead of the game in so many things. Um, and I know guys like us and guys like you, you don't go in anything to lose, right? You, you think like any given Sunday, there's a victory in there for me somewhere. Um, if you had to pick a candidate other than you, um, where would you be seated in this race? Pick another candidate. Hmm. Wow. It's, um, it's definitely an interesting election. And I think many of us are concerned by the choices that we have, call it the lack of choices. There you go. Look at the two major parties. Yep. And I, I think really the answer is for all of us that, uh, and the message I would convey to the American people in general is that we should act according to our conscience in life. We should always do what we believe is right and not make decisions out of fear and so in that, this instance, it's, you know, vote your conscience. So, you know, um, vote for whatever you believe in. And I'm running for office because I felt we were lacking in options. I thought, um, great answer. And I wasn't trying to pigeonhole you. I just, there may be another libertarian candidate out there that, that you like. But um, the point I was trying to get to was a vote for you is really a vote for the future. I hate both of them. Um, I, I, don't like the, I don't like the binary system that they're presenting me. And uh, I'm an innovator, I'm an outsider, I'm a businessman. I've made things happen when the odds were completely against me. I'm a chief executive. And your movement that you're starting right now is really a four-year movement to start an actual third party and give people more choices, isn't it? Yeah, I'm 39. I turned 40 in under a month. And so I am laying the groundwork for the future. I'll be running again in 2024. And that means we've got four years to campaign, you know, four years to start presenting this third party. But I'd prefer to call it a platform. I think one of the problems we have in this country is the political parties. I share George Washington, Washington's view during his closing address. One of the main things he warned us about is the risk of political parties. The problem with parties are you get a call, you're like, I want to do something. I want to, I want to get involved and start to fix government. And I want to, you know, I want to be in service. I want to serve the American people. And then all of a sudden you're like, well, but how do I do that? Oh, this takes money and it requires technology and it requires ballot access and it requires a platform. And so most of us join a political party. But once you do that, you're no longer free to think or say what you believe is right. You kind of have to tote the party line. And so what I'd like to see is a government of for and by the people, civil servants that are showing up to serve this nation, not for money, not for power. So I'm looking for doctors, farmers, teachers, business people, entrepreneurs, artists, scientists, engineers. And I'm looking to support 100 candidates in 2021 and 2022 to further test out the infrastructure that I'm building around this third party, call it platform, so that when candidates are elected into office, they are there to directly represent the constituents that voted them in and to act according to their conscience. My brother, um, many people are, you know, maybe it's pie in the sky, but they're talking about how New York is vulnerable. New York State, Trump's behind by 18, but they're having these rallies where the cars are driving, you know, from Manhattan all the way out to the east end of Long Island, 60 mile long uh, caravans. Um, do you think in the future the introduction of a smart 
party that you or platform that you put together can make a difference in places even like New York? Oh, yeah. It doesn't. Remember, we don't have to win many elections to make a difference. So we're living in a very polarized nation, right? It's swinging far left, far right. And the thing that will bring us back to the center or at least back to the table again in terms of conversation only requires a few people. If we had five people in Congress and call it three in the Senate, real independent candidates, it would force the left and the right to deal with us. It would force us back to the table, and that's the only path forward for us. It would act as a, like a magnetic forcing function to bring us back to the table because our future is, we're in trouble if we don't start having conversations again. This us versus them mentality does not lead to a happy ending for any of us. <laughs> well, everybody likes a happy ending, but I, I was spent some time with you last week out in Utah. Um, the Brock bus is amazing. The team is uh, tremendously energized. And uh, just sitting in the room listening to you talk to different legislators and stuff, um, some of them, I think, were really engaged. I feel like others are like, yeah, I got to listen to this. Um, but the fantastic thing to me is that the people you have involved in your campaign are all on the edge of technology and new things. And I think you're bringing a new style to this that the establishment is not prepared for. Yeah, we're definitely bringing something new. We're bringing something young. And we're bringing something that is technology enabled. At a time where technology is changing all of our lives, all of our businesses, and all of our institutions. I mean, just take a look at that movie, The Social Dilemma on Netflix. You know, you'll see that this is having a big impact on our democracy. And now with artificial intelligence, automation, robotics, the landscape of work is going to change. And I think we need visionary leadership that understands technology, that has their finger on the pulse. Remember, technology is amoral. It is neither good or bad. It is a tool and how we use it will determine the impact it has on our lives. And I think we need in our federal legislators and regulators, we need a much better sense of technology so that we can navigate this challenging but opportunistic road ahead with foresight. So, um, man, you've had foresight and you know, all these different things, including the security token offering. Um, you know, we both have a uh, shared friend in, in Patrick Byrne, and I've been a um, mentee of his for years. And when he started talking about security tokens, everybody was pointing at blockchain capital. And um, it sure seems like what you, you know, started, or at least were one of the uh, forefathers, is taking on a whole new meaning in the whole U.S. capital markets landscape. It looks like it's getting legit, and that means the regulators are going to start coming and looking at it a little harder. Yeah, so I'm, I've spent my life, most at least the last decade or two, doing things that have never been done before. You know, things that people said were impossible. They said, no, you can't do that. That doesn't work. And I'm like, well, actually, it can. I'm not limited by the status quo. I'm not limited by reality as it's currently defined. And so that's what I enjoy doing, is trying to move us forward as a, as a society, as a civilization. And the financial markets are definitely in need of a lot of upgrading. We can build new, pl new pipes, new plumbing, that creates greater efficiency, greater transparency, greater accountability, privacy when necessary, but most importantly, inclusion. There's still 55 million Americans that are unbanked. Wow. Financial inclusion. The system is leaving a lot of people behind, and if we wanted to recreate Maslow's hierarchy of needs today, it would include having an internet connection and financial tools. Without those things, it's hard to be able to pursue happiness. All right. Well, listen, I know you're in Alaska. Hopefully uh, you'll pass by and see Santa and give us a little report on how he's doing through COVID. Um, if you don't mind, my favorite place is the uh, Island of Misfit Toys. If you want to go by there, because that's where I come from also. So, um, Brock, the campaign you're doing has energy. I know you're putting a ton of your own dough in it because you care about the future of our country. Um, what are your closing thoughts? And hopefully you'll check in with us again as you bounce around from different states and let us know how it's going. Yes, please. And try to come meet us this weekend in <laughs> Cheyenne, Wyoming for the inaugural Independent National Convention. And the INC this year, if enough of us show up in its first year, will be bigger than the DNC and RNC combined. You can check that out at inc2020.us. And so closing thoughts is uh, 
Follow me on social media. Come check us out at brock.vote to learn more about specific policy issues. And I'm interested in what you have to say. And as a matter of fact, I think we are going to visit the North Pole today. And I am told <laughs> I might have a meeting with Santa Claus. And I've heard that he's never gotten involved in politics, but there is a chance that he might step in this time and endorse us. If I was with you, we'd make him an offer he can't refuse. But uh, good luck with Santa. And I'll check back in with you in a, in a few days, my friend. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Brock Pierce from Fairbanks, Alaska, out on the campaign trail, running for president against all odds. He's like a technocrat, and he's uh, an innovator, so uh, God bless him. We'll take a quick break right here. We'll come back with more Liquid Lunch right after this.